Hi, this is Seher from ECPC, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as DNA repair mechanisms. Now, before we start discussing the repair mechanisms, we need to understand that how the DNA gets damaged. We have two different categories for that. One is called as endogenous pathway, and the other one is called as exogenous pathway. Endogenous pathway means that all the factors that are involved in cellular metabolic processes are comes in the category of endogenous pathway. Exogenous pathway includes all the factors that are present environmentally is present in the exogenous pathway. Now, what are the cellular metabolic processes that are involved in DNA damage? That is called as mismatch of DNA bases, hydrolysis, oxidation and alkylation. On the other hand, the environmental factors that are involved in DNA damage are ultraviolet radiations or UV light, ionizing radiations like x-rays and gamma rays, and chemical agents like toxic substance you can ingest. Okay. Now, for example, if our body doesn't have any repair system, and the DNA damage will be there. What will happen in that case? We will have genomic instability. The cell might go in the process called epipatosis or cell death. Or if it's not going in the process of cell death, it might lose the process of cell division. And the process of losing cell division is called as senescence. So if that's the situation there, then we will face a lot of different kind of problems and we cannot survive in that situation. So that's why we have repair systems present inside our body to avoid all these things. Now for mismatch of DNA bases, the system we have is called as mismatch repair system or the short form is MMR. For hydrolysis, oxidation, and alkylation, the repair system we have is called as base excision repair, or the short term is BER. For ultraviolet radiations, the repair mechanisms we are going to follow is called as nucleotide excision repair, the short form is NER, and for ionizing radiation and chemical agents, the DNA mostly get double strand breaks there, and we have two different further mechanisms that are present inside that thing. So we will discuss the double strand breaks in my next video, but in this video, we will discuss three different repair systems in detail. That is mismatch repair system, base excision repair system, and nucleotide excision repair system. Okay, now let's discuss the first repair system that is called as mismatch repair system or MMR. In this repair system, as you can see in the picture, the DNA polymerase is adding new nucleotide strands by copying the old or parental DNA strand in the process of replication. Sometimes this DNA polymerase make a mistake and add a wrong nucleotide at that position. Most of the time, this DNA polymerase fix the problem by itself because they do have a system called 3' prime to 5' prime exonuclease inside the DNA polymerase and it can fix the problem. But sometimes, like 1 in 1000, they skip the process of proof reading. So if that's the case, then we will have a small bulge present on the double helix. Now in this case, in this picture, the DNA polymerase add several different nucleotides uh, in the newly synthesized DNA. So we can see only one bulge here. But most of the time, the the nucleotide that skipped the proof reading mechanism is only one nucleotide. Just like in this picture, you can see that thymine is added instead of cytosine in the newly synthesized strand. So only one nucleotide is wrong in this case. And if we can see the double helix structure here, the bulge will be present on both sides in that situation. So after the process of replication, it's really difficult to remember that which strand was the parental DNA and which strand is the newly synthesized DNA, like which strand have the problem, right? 
So to detect that problem, we have a process called as hemimethylation. Hemimethylation means that parental DNA do have methyl group added with this uh, parental DNA, while newly synthesized DNA doesn't have that. So the proteins, the proteins that is going to repair this problem, is going to detect the methylation on the parental DNA and will recognize that which strand needs the repairment. The protein that comes in handy or help the DNA strand is called as MUD proteins. Now, these MUD proteins have three different subunits. That is called MUD S protein, MUD L protein, and MUD H protein. MUD S protein is basically the protein that recognizes the bulge or the wrong uh, DNA nucleotide that is added there, followed by a MUD H protein that is kind of scissor for us, but it is inactive right now. It needs a helper protein called as MUD L to break the strand like this. So once they are attached, the DNA nucleotide strand will get break and we will remove that wrong nucleotide from the position, as you can see in the picture. Now, to add the correct sequence of nucleotide, we need a polymerase. So in this situation, we have DNA polymerase 1 to add the nucleotide, and then we will have a perfect DNA strand after the repair system. Bingo! If we're talking about eukaryotic repair system, nothing is different. The mud proteins are going to attach to this PCNA circle over there, and that is called as proliferating cell nuclear antigen that is attached with the polymerase epsilon or polymerase delta over there, depending on that the strand is lagging strand or the leading strand. If you want to know the details about the lagging strand and leading strand in the DNA replication, you can watch my other video that is called as DNA replication for prokaryotes and eukaryotes separately. Okay, now this protein is going to attach with PCNA and the polymerase epsilon is going to refill the gap by attaching the right nucleotide in that position. Okay. Okay, next. The next is base excision repair system. In this repair system, the problem that we are facing is hydrolysis, oxidation, and alkylation. These processes are attacking the nitrogenous bases that is present within the DNA. As you can see in the picture on the left, these red circles or arrows are basically the oxidation. This H is basically showing you the hydrolysis and A is showing you the alkylation. So if one of these nitrogenous bases is, get a, is going to get attacked by these substances, then we will have the base lions. Now, for example, this is the nucleotide strand that we have, and this is the nitrogenous base, like cytosine is attacked by hydrolysis, oxidation, and alkylation, or base lion is present in, at this position. Now, the base excision repair system comes in handy. So, this nucleotide base will get glycosylated by the process called as DNA glycosylation and it's going to remove this nitrogenous base from the strand and creating a site called as AP site or a basic site. Now what is happening here is that actually the DNA glycosylation is actually attacking the bond that is present between the ribose sugar and nitrogenous base there. Okay. Now, nitrogenous base is removed. What about the wrong nucleotide without a nitrogenous base that is still present there? We need to remove that as well, right? So for that, we have another enzyme called as AP endonuclease, and it will come at the site and remove that nucleotide that is wrong and without nitrogenous base there. So once that's done, again, a gap is generated, and that gap is filled by the polymerase beta to make another nucleotide. And these nucleotides is going to get joined by the uh, rest of the DNA by the enzyme called DNA ligase. And we will have the perfect DNA strand again without any problem. Bingo! Last but not the least, the process that we are going to discuss is called as nucleotide excision repair. 
Now, in this picture, you can see that this is the ultraviolet light that is attacking the DNA strand. And once that attack the DNA strand, the pyrimidines we have, like in this case, you can see there are two thymines present side by side. They make covalent bonds between each other. And once that occur, we will have kinks in the double helix structure and disrupting the double helix structure there. Okay, now how can we solve this problem? This problem will be solved by the mechanism called as nucleotide excision repair mechanism. Now let's see how it's going to do it. So this is the strand in front of us and this is the place where the UV light is attacking and making the um, covalent bond. Okay, now the covalent bond is made. Uh, we have a bunch of different proteins called UV or ABC proteins and these proteins are going to come and detect the problem. UV or A, basically the protein that detects the dimerization of pyrimidines there and once the detection is done, UV or A is going to remove from the strand and UV or B calls UV or C to come and break the nucleotide from maybe 10 to 15 nucleotides long. So we can see the breaks are made uh, by the red lines that is present on the strand. Okay. Now the backbone is removed. What about the hydrogen bonds that are present in between the nucleotides? We need to remove that as well to remove this part. For that, we have another protein. And in this case, the protein we have is called as UVRD1. It's going to come and remove all the hydrogen bonds that is present in between the nucleotide strands. Now once that's done, we will have the situation like this, like the strand from 10 to 15 nucleotide long is going to remove from the position. Okay, so that's done, right? Now we need DNA polymerase to make the new DNA strand at that position. In this case, we have DNA polymerase 1. It is going to make the new strand followed by DNA ligase that's going to join the new strand with the old strand and we will have the perfect strand back again. Now this was the story for prokaryotes. What about the eukaryotes? In eukaryotes, the story is the same, only the name of the proteins are different. So look at this picture and follow the red boxes that I'm going to discuss and it will be really easy for you to understand it. Okay, so first is the detection of the damage done by the UV light. So that is done by the protein called XPC in eukaryotes. Now XPC detects the problem and calls other proteins called as XPB and XPD to confirm the damage. Once the damage is confirmed, the two strands will come apart and we will have a bunch of other proteins called as XPF and XPG and they are going to remove the DNA, the wrong DNA from that strand followed by the DNA replication polymerases or repair system that's going to attach new nucleotide strand and then DNA ligase is going to join all the things together. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please hit the button like and please subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.